The scripture for this service is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and members of 9,000 branch churches in the United States of America, Canada, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Brazil, Bolivia, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Japan, Mongolia, China, Taiwan, Thailand, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, Nepal, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Israel, Palestine, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Congo, Gabon, Angola, Botswana, Swaziland, South Africa, Burkina Faso, Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Nigeria. The United Kingdom, Ireland, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Greece, Russia, Sweden, Estonia, Belarus, Ukraine, Dagestan, and local sanctuaries in Korea. And the members who are attending this service through satellites and the Internet. And GCN TV viewers and Manmin TV viewers. This is the 12th lecture on Genesis. Let's review briefly what we have learned so far. In the beginning, God, the origin, existed in the original space in the form of the light that contained the sound or voice. At a certain time, God, the origin, cohered as a light at the vertex of the spiritual realm to begin the human cultivation. At the same time, the original space was divided into four spaces that have different density of the spirit and different brightness of the light. Now, please look at the monitor. This is how the first, the second, third, and the fourth heavens were created. The light that cohered at the vertex of the spiritual realm was divided into three different lights, and each put on a spiritual form that is like that of man. That is, God the origin became God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The process of God the origin being God the Trinity was the division of spirit, in which original entities came forth from the one original entity. That is, two more original entities were made from the only one original entity. The division of the spirit in which the original entities issued forth from the original entity took place only once and at this time. And it is only God the Trinity that has the ability to separate the spirits from its original entity. Therefore, not only God the Father, but also God the Son and God the Holy Spirit can freely divide their spirits as they please. However, it is the division of the spirit that sub-entities come out of the original entity. Through the division of the spirit, God the Trinity has managed so many works throughout the history of human cultivation. Different names are used in the Bible according to the characteristics of the work done or to the roles of God. There are about 30 names that refer to God the Trinity. I spent last eight lectures to explain the meaning of each of these names. Beginning with this lecture, I will explain the works of the creation after God the origin became God the Trinity. God the Trinity created what is necessary first in the place where He stays. When God existed in the original space as the light that contained the sound, He didn't need a separate place to stay because He stayed in the form of light containing sound, right? However, He now needed a place to stay in since He put on a form. God the Trinity, of course, can either put on the form or not when He is in the fourth heaven. God can change His form as freely as He pleases in His heart. It's possible because the attribute of the fourth heaven is the same as the original space. However, God the Trinity puts on a form in the third heaven where the heavenly kingdom is located. And there are separate places for God the Trinity to stay in, in the third heaven. Of course, there is a place for God the Trinity in the fourth heaven as well. It is the place that is necessary only when God the Trinity puts on a form. 
When He created this place, God the Trinity created spiritual beings that coexist with Him and that He oversees. There are two kinds of spiritual beings that God oversees. They are angels and cherubim. God created angels and cherubim with His Word. And I'm going to explain about these angels and cherubim over the next few lectures. An angel is almost the same in its form as that of a man, except that it has wings. There are various shapes of cherubim. The spiritual beings that have the appearances of form such as lions, eagles, and cows are all cherubim. Dragons are generally considered imaginary creatures, but they were originally a kind of cherubim. But I will come back to cherubim later, but for now, I'm going to tell you about angels. Let's take a look at general characteristics of angels. Since the shape of angels is almost the same as that of a man, some parts of the Bible described angels as men. For example, when the Lord resurrected, the women who went to the tomb saw an angel. For this, Mark 16 verse 5 says that they saw a young man sitting at the right wearing a white robe. Wearing a white robe. For the same scene, however, John 20 verse 12 described it as two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been lying. When the Lord ascended into heaven, two angels appeared to his disciples who were gazing into the sky. But for this, Acts chapter 1 verses 10 and 11 says that two men in white clothing told them that the Lord would come back. From the fact that the people of the Bible who witnessed the angels describe them as men, we can see that the shape of angels is similar to that of men. So, I mean, if they spread their wings, we can see they are angels. But without their wings, if we see them, you know, face to face, then, you know, we can just, uh, we, we can just see in the shape of a man, okay? So only we can uh, recognize them as angels only when they spread their wings, okay? Just as man was created in the image of God, angels were also created in the image of God. Of course, angels were created before man. However, there is a clear difference between man and angels. Angels only resemble the outward image of God, but man was created to resemble even the heart of God. This I will explain in great detail when we get to the creation of Adam, the first man. Now, since the shape of an angel is similar to that of a man, is the size and height also similar to each other? There are angels that are similar to men. However, there are very tiny angels and huge angels as well. There are also male angels and female angels. However, it does not mean that you know, angels have you know, physiological features of a man or a woman. Angels do not need to marry or to breed just as men do. They just follow the orders of God and do their roles. However, according to their roles, they may have the form and characteristics that are in a masculine or feminine. For example, if there is an angel who plays the role of an you know, army general, which form would be more appropriate? A male form or a female? Of course, it is a male shape. What about dancing and singing? A female form might be more suitable. Well, I don't mean that there are no you know, masculine appearing angels that dance. Just as there are male dancers in this world and they play their roles, there are male-like angels as well. Dear brothers and sisters, when God created angels and cherubim, He didn't give them the humanity that He gave to man. Father God didn't give humanity to angels and cherubim. He created them so that they would only obey orders according to their hierarchy. However, angels can also feel the heart of God whom they are serving. 
Let me make an example of animals. Man raises animals such as cows, horses, pigs, chickens, and dogs. Among these animals, for example, can chickens feel the heart of their owner? No, they can't. There are exceptions, as with dogs. If dogs stay with their owner over a long period of time, they can feel the heart of their owner a little bit. If the owner gets angry, his dog can feel it, puts its tail between legs and tries to read the owner's face. On the other hand, if the owner rejoices, his dog also wags its tail and they rejoice together. But there are dogs in Gesemane prayer place. One dog does not obey well. If the dog is outside, if the dog is put outside in a that dog doesn't want to go inside there. I mean, it's a house. So it tries to get away from the owner. <laughs> Try not to get captured by the owner. So that dog doesn't obey well. But there is a reason we always put that outside. Because it catches mice very well. Only if there is a very small sound, the dog is waiting there, try to catch the mouse. So, that dog is very good at catching mice. But other dogs obey, obey very well. So when the owner gives them order to get back to their house, then they go back. But that dog doesn't like the order to go back to his house. And I asked the man owner, how can the dog read your mind? Because, it, I mean, that dog, you know, play, I mean, follows his master very well, but once the owner tries to put that dog in his house, he tries to go away, get away from him. And uh, the owner s search the internet, and a dog can read the owner's mind, <laughs> can read the feeling. So dogs can feel the heart of the owners to some extent. Likewise, angels can also show various facial expressions and attitudes according to a given mood. If their master sings praises and dances with joy, the angel also follows the master in happiness. If the master laughs at something funny, the angel also laughs following the master. If the master becomes sad, the angel also looks sad and it sits down helplessly. According to the status of the master's mind, the look and attitude of an angel also changes. The characteristics of angels also vary according to their given duties. For example, the angels that sing or dance usually laugh with ease. Some angels are playful and they are good at making funny faces. On the other hand, the angels that play the role of security guard do not laugh at all. In the same way, there are angels that are given a unique duty in the spiritual realm, but There are other angels that minister the children of God on earth. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? For, those, you know, for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. After accepting the Lord and their name is, whose name is written, whose names are written in the book of life in heaven. So, you have at least one angel by you who is ministering you to lead you, uh, to help you lead good Christian life. If you live in the light, the angel protects you. So you can escape from disasters and calamities and all kinds of diseases. But if you do not live by the word of God, that angel cannot protect you, cannot protect you according to the justice. So you can get diseases, swine flu get, can get into you, okay? 
I prayed for swine flu, right? And uh, people got healed. There were many people who have been healed. Most of them didn't keep the Lord's Day holy. You know. But those who kept the law, who kept the Lord's Day holy, and give the whole tithes, didn't get a swine flu. So, you know, when they come to, when they came to me, I asked them whether they kept the Lord's Day holy. And they, they, they told me that they, they would keep the Lord's Day holy from now on. There was a f- man in a family. A son was, became a victim of swine flu. Now, his younger brother got swine flu again. So there is a case like this. So if one of your member, family member got swine flu or flu or cold, you should, you should not pray for that one only. You have to pray for yourself and for entire family so that the flu, so that the flu does not get into any of your family members. so that you can be protected by the firewall of the Holy Spirit, by heavenly heavenly host and angels, by fiery eyes of God the Father, okay? If you don't pray like that, there is a chance that your family member can get, you know, uh, infected. It is a season of flu and cold. So many people got cold and flu. and some people got so scared when someone shows a symptom of flu okay? so be careful are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation so if your name is not written in the book of life in heaven an angel is not sent for you okay So that's why you are protected from a car accident. Seventeen people, seventeen people rode on a van, which was a 12 passenger car. And in their way to, on their way to the city of Daegu, the van was turned upside down but all of them were protected there was even a pregnant lady she was fine her baby in her womb was fine too even the car was wrecked nobody got injured except the one who was pregnant but after receiving my prayer she was able to attend a revival meeting without any problem. The reason you are protected all the time in a car accident. So many people say, you know, they uh, felt like, you know, as if someone was, someone were holding you. Because there was, there is uh, an angel who is guarding you and protecting you all the time. Um, police officer j u n g i k j e o n Elder j e o n When he fell off from the fifth floor, he didn't get injured because his angel protected him. While others were seriously injured, he was the only one who was protected. Even though he was fell off from the fifth floor, right? He was protected. As recorded, a child of God is assigned at least one angel that ministers that child. If you believe this fact, what should you do? If you doze off during a worship service, you should know how much your angel tries to wake you up. The angel will say like, Master, you shouldn't doze off. It is rude before God. And desperately try to wake you up. However, the voice of angels is spiritual. And so you cannot audibly hear it. 
Unless you are spiritually awakened, you cannot hear this voice, this voice of an angel. Even though it is not clear, if you are spiritually awakened, you can hear it in your heart. So you cannot doze off during the worship service because you are so ashamed and you are so embarrassed when you doze off. But those who, who doze off, I can understand those people, right? They doze off before God, even though they have to worship God in spirit and in truth. They don't hear the voice of the angel. Why? Because they didn't cast off the untruth, they befriended the world, they loved the world. That's why. It is because you are spiritually asleep, not fleshly. In other words, you have too much untruth in your heart, too much love and affection for the world. So when you listen to the word during the worship service, you cannot understand it due to your fleshly thoughts. Moreover, if you have idle thoughts, you cannot concentrate but easily fall asleep. Think of your in the student days. Let's say your teacher is teaching and you have idle thoughts. Then you are just You just wasted the time. You don't understand what that teacher said because you had idle thoughts in your mind. But if you concentrated on the teacher's saying, then you can understand whatever he said. And you can remember it very well. It is the same with the Word of God. If you have idle thoughts, you cannot concentrate and you can easily fall asleep. And the enemy devil and Satan will try to put you in sleep. In this case, no matter how desperately your angel tries to awaken you, you cannot hear its voice. On the other hand, to the extent you fill your heart with the truth, you can hear the voice of the Spirit well. Even if you cannot see your angel with spiritual eyes, you can sense the angel must be feeling like this now. Even if you cannot feel it, since you know it now, please try to do what your angel desires for you. Then, and Father God will be pleased with you. If you gossip and speak ill of someone, your angel will stay away from you. Because the Bible tells you not to gossip. not to judge, not to condemn. But there are so many people who judge well. And they, they pretend as if they can read others' mind. And they judge and they condemn. I'm wondering how and when they can you know, change spiritually. I mean, unless they break their self-righteousness and frame They are far from spirit. There are people who you know, gossip others. The same. Well, your angel will say first, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. However, if you don't listen to it, but continue to do it, the angel will stand farther from you and eventually turn its back to you. probably 20 meters away, 10 to 20 meters away, and turn its back to you. If your angel ignores you like this, the enemy devil and Satan will never lose this opportunity because the angel should protect you. They will incite and instigate you to speak more words of untruth. On the contrary, if you live by the word of God, your angel will be so much pleased, and he will stay close beside you, keep you, and protect you. So if you are kept and protected by angel, it is such a blessing. Depending on how much you come into spirit, and depending on what kind of level your faith is, 
A stronger angel can protect you. Because all the angels have ranks. Let's say you are an angel. I mean, you come, you've been here at this church for five years or ten years. No. Spiritually, even if you are a kid, if you have stronger faith, then higher rank angel will protect the baby. I mean, the, 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 the kid. Okay? And those angels will fear you. and respect you. Even if you have an, even if you have encounter, have an encounter with a dangerous accident or situation, your angel can keep you safe. There are many mommy members who were not injured at all, even though their cars were wrecked in a car accident. Some of them were thrown out of the moving car through its window and fell down to the ground, but they were okay. And they said that they felt someone was holding them up and supported comfortably. If you live in the light by the word of God, you can be protected by angels in any situation. I experienced this many times. And the workers around me have witnessed so many times. In addition, angels are recording your every word and action in heaven. The angel can record the words spoken out of spoken by your spoken out of your lips, and your actions, your behaves, your attitudes. Everything is recorded by an angel in heaven. That's why you will be judged for every word on judgment day. If you know this, you will never speak easily. The third century, second century, main century, second floor, those who speak carelessly, you should remember, everything you said will be judged on the judgment day as it is recorded. So you should be careful with what you say. So you should cast off untruths and sin and live by the word of God. That's it. But if you repent of what you spoke, then you can be forgiven. The problem is you do not remember what you spoke. That's why Even though you have a wall of sin, you cannot destroy it. So, you should be very careful. The Bible always say, the Bible says, you know, you will be judged according to what you spoke. You may remember what you did, but you may not remember what you speak. So, even if you speak bad, badly, you have to repent right away. Ah, this was a word of untruth. This is, word, this is the word of judgment or condemning. I should repent. Then you should repent. Then you will be forgiven. And the record will be submitted as the evidence of judgment during the great white throne judgment. So I'm not saying no, you will not be saved because of this. Unless you commit the sin that will lead you to death, then you will be saved. Okay? Or some blaspheming and standing against the will of God and blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Or putting our Lord into public shame and then putting Him into a cross again. Other than this, I mean, other than this, you will be judged on the judge on the uh, for the judgment of reward. Okay, in Matthew 18:10, Jesus said, "See that you do not despise one of these little ones, 
Therefore, I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. So do not despise one of these little ones. Because their angels in heaven continually see the face of God who is in heaven. So if you despise one of a little kid, a little kid, then it will be recorded and reported to God the Father in heaven. It will be all recorded and reported in heaven. so many angels will record every action of the people on this earth. Well, how can uh, God the Father you know, can receive the report of the uh, 6.7 uh, billion people? Everything will be recorded, put it in a record. Father God does not listen to the report of the 6.7 billion people, okay? There is an order. In the spiritual realm, they put a report in a sensor, and then it is reported to God the Father. Even though there were 380 members in pilgrim trip, but they all moved and walked as one, as if they were one. So all the guides said, that, you know, how could mommy members act like that? Because they have never seen others you know, move like that. that There were always a people, you know, who came to the promised, you know, in the appointed place late. But it was not the case of m a m i n pilgrim trip. If, uh, they are prom- if they promised to come to a certain place at a certain time, that all, they were always on time. The m a m i n members were like that. They stood in line and they walked in a, a very nice manner. So a guide was very curious. So he stood in the middle, and all the members stood. And when the guide went back to the other direction, all the other followed him. <laughs> We just obeyed, right? Like this, the order in the spiritual realm is so precise. And this order is precise and dark the world of darkness as well. Therefore, I urge you to live all the more perfectly in the light by believing that an angel is right beside you. Do not overlook this kind of message. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God created the whole universe and searches every man on earth. An angel is assigned to each man on earth and records their every word and action. These angels are in heaven. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Let's say there is a 6.7 billion people. Now you'll be soon. It will soon become 6.8 billion. Okay. Soon it will be 6.8 billion. Now let's say 6.7. Now, how many angels are on this earth? 6.7 billion? Wow. If There are 2 billion people who accepted the Lord. How many angels were there? Of course, 2 billion angels. The angel is assigned to the one who accepted the Lord as a Savior. But some people have two angels, more than one angel. According to the will of God, some people may have more than one angel, two or three. There is a wisdom, there is an angel that gives wisdom. 
There is a, some pastors give a very nice sermon. And that's the one, that's the case. You know, where the, uh, the angel of wisdom g i v e wisdom to the preacher. So, such a, in such a case, you know, that pastor may have more than one angel. I also told you that at least one angel is assigned to each man on earth to minister to them. The number of these angels is so huge. The total number of the angels that God created is uncountable. And the world of angels is well organized. In the Bible, there are not only angels, but also heavenly hosts and archangels. Luke 2, verse 13 says, And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Here, the heavenly host is the heavenly army. Heavenly army. Therefore, we can see that there are angels that play the role of soldiers. The first Thessalonians 4.16 also says, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. As said, the existence of the archangel proves that there is order in the world of angels. In fact, the world of angels is very well organized like a government organization of a nation in this world. And the order is very strict. There is a strong angel as in Revelation, right? And there is a baby angel too. A very small, tiny angel. And there are big angels and huge angels too. I mean, you cannot see that angel in one sight. There is such a huge angel too. There are many, many different kinds of angels. So there is a strong angel as in the Revelation. an archangel and there are ranks among the archangels too if God comes down to this earth then 24 archangels we guard them guard our God the government of this country has the prime minister who is the head of the administration and there are many departments beneath him. There are the Department of Defense, Department of Administration, Department of Culture, and others. And the head of each department is called a minister. The minister equivalent in the world of angels is the archangel. Archangels play the role of God the Father's hands, feet, eyes, and ears. And they search various fields. They receive direct orders from God the Father, and they report to Him. Underneath such archangels, there are countless angels. So heavenly hosts and non-angels and archangels, well, don't assume that you know, there are only three ranks. There are many different kinds of organizations in the world of our angels. However, an archangel doesn't manage angels beneath it individually. Angels are grouped by numbers and there are leaders that command each group level. It's like the system of Roman army because there were kiliarchs, centurions, and captains according to the number of soldiers they commanded. So kiliarchs commanded 1,000, centurions 100, and captains 50. And it is, we, our uh, Korean army has the uh, same system too, right? Even though the term is different. The surgeon, and captain, and lieutenant, and general. So many, there are many different ranks. And underneath, there are different numbers of soldiers, right? Depending on uh, their ranks. 
And there are many different kinds. Uh, there are ranks among the generals too, really, right? Depending on their stars on their uh, shoulder or their uh, cap. It is somewhat similar to the organization of the church. There is general great parish pastor, and underneath there are great grand parish pastor, grand parish pastors, and parish pastors. Also underneath parish pastors, there are district leaders, sub-district leaders, and cell leaders. Likewise, in the world of angels, With archangel in its center, there are leading angels at different levels. In a strict order, they work, they work according to the orders of their higher-ranked angels. So there is, no disobey. there is no disobedience in the world of angels. So when Lucifer rebelled, one-third of angels underneath Lucifer cooperated with Lucifer because there is disobedience is unacceptable. So there were about one-third of angels of the heaven were underneath Lucifer's command. Those of you who have spiritual eyes opened can see that the size and dignity of angels are not the same from each other. It is because angels are in different levels and their given duties are different. The organization of angels that consists of archangels, different levels of leading angels, and angels underneath them are well organized. Once an order is given from the top, it is precisely conveyed and the reports made at the lower level are well conveyed. Even if an order has to go through many steps, it can be conveyed instantly. And the church organization should be like that. Let's say a uh, sub-district pastor graduated from elementary school. To elementary school. Uh, but the district, I mean the cell leader graduated from university. So I, am, I graduated from uh, university. So I cannot disobey the sub-district leader's command. Uh, then that cell leader is very arrogant spiritually, okay? You have to obey the order of spiritual world. When you obey, it works. If you disobey, peace is broken. You have to follow the order of the spiritual world. It is, it is the same in the army. There is a boss and there, is, there are people underneath him with different levels, right? If you go to a company. But if they all go to the army, their ranks may be you know, mixed up. Just the, uh, just the ordinary worker can be a higher rank in the army. And the, uh, the manager has a lower position than the ordinary worker. But in the army, the manager should obey his subordinate. When we had the, uh, the, uh, the army training, the order was very strict. We had to obey because it is the organization of army and that's how the, uh, the army can be managed and the victory can be achieved. Without the order, Strictly obeyed, there is no victory. Since the order is very precise like this, even though there are countless angels, the rule of God can be well practiced. Even though God is sitting on His throne, He can search everyone on earth because angels work like this. Of course, God is Almighty, and He can manage all this all by Himself. However, angels directly check all things by themselves and report it to God. 
like this. Angels play not only the role of a reporter, but also the role of the witness to it. This fact adds the light of justice to God's judgment when God judges something. Let's say, if Father God searched you know, 6.7 billion people, then you might be curious. Now, think of a computer. Even though it is very small, this computer can control so many things. Now, during the, uh, during the seven year Great Tribulation, a huge supercomputer will control every life of people. Now, our Father God is Almighty. What is it that He cannot do? I hope you can understand it well now. Okay? Even though God searches even the heart of man, well, it is, I mean, the development of science is so quick and fast. I got it, uh, was it last week? Or? I was passing by and Elder Trey didn't pay uh, didn't pay the, uh, the expressway. But, you know, Elder Trey didn't pay it. Didn't pay for it. So I asked him, you know, why don't you pay for the uh, expressway? So he said, well, it's automatically done. I have a card in front of my, in, in, in the dashboard, and then it is automatically calculated. And and yesterday, we passed through toll gate without paying it. But I could hear, you know, there is, you have a balance of blah, blah, blah. And I asked Elder Che, what does it mean? And Elder Che said, because when this car is passing, a machine reads this car instantly and, you know, tells us how much balance we have. I recently knew it. So, as we go through toll gate, there is a machine automatically checks it, and the cars and reads the card, and then you know the fee is deducted from the card. So it is so fastly developing. Sometimes I'm so thankful because I don't know all this stuff. If I had, you know, wanted to study all these things, then, you know, so it could have been take so long, right? But, you know, I didn't know it from the beginning. But those of you who studied to, who once studied this field has to, you know, study again and again. But anyway, I am not, I mean, there is nothing that discomforts me because, you know, workers around me help me all the time. Whenever I ask a question, they give me an answer. So even though God searches even the heart of man, He doesn't judge anything alone. He doesn't judge anything alone. He decides and judges injustice according to the report of angels that see and hear all things directly. Well, for example, how did God work when He judged Sodom and Gomorrah? Genesis 19 verse 1 says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. 
I'll come back to this in greater detail later, but for now, these two angels are actually archangels that are under the direct supervision of God. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent archangels under His direct supervision to check on them again like this. So, Father God should make a great judgment. Make a fire. I mean, judge Sodom and Gomorrah by fire. But He sent two archangels to check them. Father God is so precise and He is the God of justice. So He sends these two angels and then check what was done. But there are many people who you know, judge and condemn others without checking the whole situation. But nowadays, whole situations are being revealed. Those people who judged this church as heretic, now it is revealed that they wrongfully judged this church without checking, without checking the whole situation properly. They judged this church. There was a church. who gave, you know, uh, 300 million won to uh, the person who judged this church as heretic. And they made this church heretic, which was unacceptable. They cannot judge other churches in other denominations. When Father God judges, He sends His subordinates under direct supervision to check the situation, the whole things. And when He judges, He set up two witnesses. How can they, how could they judge churches without checking the whole situation? Now, all things should be corrected. Uh, this week, there was an article in a Christian newspaper. Dr. Gerald Lee gathered the young people and trained them and appointed, anointed them as a servant of God. There was a rumor. Well, and then they, the article said that they have to stop Dr. Gerald Lee. Why do they stop me? Even though, I mean, even if the rumor is true, why do they have to stop me? But there were so many people who make these kind of rumors. You should never do that. Even if you are a leader of a church, you shouldn't do that. You should not accuse anyone wrongfully. You should not judge or condemn others. According to the word of God, you should be able to love even your enemies. You should be like that. Genesis 19 verse 1 says, Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening. I'll come back to this in greater detail later, but for now, these two angels are actually archangels that are under the direct supervision of God. Before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, God sent archangels under His direct supervision to check on them again like this. However, and we have to know this system and we should never as someone wrongfully accused, okay? 
It should never happen in this church. However, the people of Sodom were very devious, even desiring, desiring to harm these two angels. Finally, God brought the judgment of fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah. Likewise, angels are the workers of God, and they help the government of God be managed in perfect justice. There are many records about various works of angels in the Bible. Here are a few. In Revelation 7 verse 11, there is a scene that all the angels were standing around the throne and worshiping God. When our Jesus was born, a multitude of heavenly hosts praised God. It is written in Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, Some good shepherds witnessed it, and they found baby Jesus. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, Daniel said in the den of lions, My God sent His angel and shut the lions' mouths, and they have not harmed me. The lions were hungry in the den. But Daniel was in the den, thrown into the den. So he was supposed to be eaten by those lions. But God sent angel and shut the lion's mouth. So the, those lions could not harm you know, Daniel. Probably those in the lions must have been surprised because they couldn't open their mouths, right? And they have not harmed me. In Acts chapter 12 is a scene where an angel saved Peter who was locked in a prison. So angel can save a man who is in prison. So it is the angel who puts on the uh, spiritual space, okay? So that, you know, that angel can be seen by uh, normal people's eyes. And this will happen soon. There are some people who see angels with their bare eyes. Those who have spiritual eyes can see the whole wings, but even though people, even though Those who don't have, you know, uh, who don't have spiritual eyes can see the actual wings of an angel. So it is, the, it is being prepared, and when the time comes, it, this will happen. Revelation, verse, Revelation chapter 8, verse 3 and 4 describe, describes a scene that an angel puts an incense of the prayers of saints in a golden censer and gives it on the golden altar before the throne of God. As written in Matthew 4.11, as Jesus passed the three temptations of the devil after the 40-day fasting, angels came and began to minister him. Jesus passed the three temptations. So angels rejoiced. So when you encounter temptations, and if you pass all the temptations, then you will receive answer. You will receive blessing. If you do not pass the temptations, if you do not pass the trial, then you should realize that you are not a vessel to receive God's blessing. Even if you do not pass the test, your vessel is not ready. You should know this. So you cannot receive answer or blessing. So you have to pass the three trials. Those of you who have faith can, you know, win victory in any situation if they, can, if they do not change in any way. They do not undergo trials because they endure everything by faith and overcome everything. Then when the time comes, Father God gives them blessing. The greater the blessing, I mean, the greater the trial, the greater the blessing. 
1998 and 1999, trials were so huge. So what a blessing we received. A strong angel appears in Revelation 10, verse 1, and Revelation 18, verse 21. A strong angel. In Revelation, from chapter 8 to 11, each time seven angels sound a trumpet during the seven-year tribulation, a serious disaster comes to the earth. And in Revelation chapter 16, there is a scene that the seven angels pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So such angels are not just ordinary angels. Do you think just ordinary angel can carry out that such you know, important duty? Moreover, just as 2 Samuel 20, 24 verse 16 says, when the angel stretched out his hand toward Jerusalem to destroy it, there are angels that execute the judgment of God. Psalm 103 verse 21 says, Bless the Lord, all you His hosts, you who serve Him, doing His will. You who serve Him, doing His will. As Psalm 68 verse 17 says, the chariots of God are myriads, thousands upon th thousands. We can see how huge the scale of the heavenly host is. The chariots, the chariots of God are myriad, you know, myri myriads. One thousand by one thousand, how much is it? In emergency, God sends the heavenly host to protect the people of God. God sent such huge army and protected people of God. So who could interfere with them? Nobody can interfere with the people of God. For example, if you read 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha was surrounded by the army of Aram. At this time, Elisha's servant was seized with fear and worried so much. However, Elisha said to his servant, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And as he prayed to God to open his servant's spiritual eyes, the servant saw horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Since the heavenly host is riding on the horses and chariots of fire, it means that the heavenly host came in a great mass at the time. Eventually, Elisha was not harmed at all. The same thing happened during the Israel festival. There are many more works that these that angels do. Even the names of some angels are mentioned in the Bible. They are Gabriel and Michael. In fact, they are all archangels. Since their names are written in the Bible, they must be given very important duties. So, just a few names are written in the Bible. But that does not mean there are just a few archangels. No, there are so many countless archangels. Okay? Now, since their names are spe specifically written in the Bible, it means they have such, a very, such important duties. I will explain the duty of these archangels in the next lecture. I will cover the roles of other archangels in the next lecture as well. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the air that we breathe all the time is invisible, but it surely exists. Likewise, the spiritual realm is invisible, but it is actually existing. It exists. Since you prayed for a long period of time to be sanctified, there are many who have spiritual eyes open. And there are many who can see all the spiritual things precisely. But those who can see the deeper things. 
And I've checked them personally. Sometimes I check them even nowadays, how they are precise. It is so easy to check them. It happened during the uh, days of this church began. There was a divine healing meeting on Friday, every Friday on that service. Father God opened the spiritual eyes for one person every night, every Friday. So I check with them all the time. But some people say, I had the spiritual eyes open. But there were people who lied. But we could easily spot their lies. I asked them, what did, what did you see? What kind of angel did you see? Then they should be able to answer. But their answer was not identical to those who have very specific and clear spiritual eyes. So after I've been through, there have been no people who, uh, who told a lie. I checked them because they should not deceive in ordinary members. But anyway, in this church, there are so many people who speak very, who see very uh, specific and detailed things. When they are near me, they can help me very much. They are so busy nowadays, so they cannot be around me. When they are around me, it can be very helpful. Someone was suffering so much last time, and he wasn't sure why the pain was there. So I just prayed. He didn't, he didn't get a checkup in the hospital. He just had a pain. So I prayed. And there was Pastor h e j i n Lee. I was so thankful. She said, between a liver and other, there are so many stones. So I prayed again. All the stones, go away. Father, burn all these stones so that those stones could come out. When I prayed, knowing all these things precisely, then those stones came out right away. So the pain stopped right away. Right after receiving the second prayer, the pain stopped. So, in this case, I mean, in such a case, they are very helpful. So, if you know the, uh, the correct names of your disease, then it can be very helpful. If you don't know the name of the disease, I just vaguely pray for it. So, just praying. Vaguely or praying with the correct name of the disease is very different. So when you receive prayer, you should know correctly how you are sick and what kind of, what kind of disease you have. Senior Pastor, put your hands on over my head, then I will be fine. I have to ask them a couple of times. Why do you want me to put my hands on you? And I know, I know you're busy just to put your hands on my head. That's it. But the Bible doesn't teach you so. You have to exactly say how you are sick. And that is the faith. When the beggar Bartimaeus came to the Lord, our Lord asked him, What do you want? Bartimaeus said, Son of David, the beggar Bartimaeus, shouted like that. The uh, King Herod and other people tried to meet our Lord. They couldn't meet with the Lord because there were steps and guards. Anyway, when Bartimaeus shouted like that, our Lord asked him, What 
Did our Lord assume that He wanted to see and prayed for Him? No, He didn't do so. Even though He knew it, He asked them, What do you want me to do for you? It means He had to confess the prayer topic. I wanted to see. Then our Lord worked. You have to make a confession of faith. But you just say, put your hands on top, on my top. Many ladies hide their diseases. Then even though I pray, it cannot be harbored in my heart. You should surely give a confession of faith. Likewise, the spiritual realm is invisible, but it surely exists. Just as our bodies are in the midst of the air, the physical world is actually a subordinate world to the spiritual realm. This physical world, fleshly world, is an extremely small part of the whole world that God created. Some people say, if you show me God, then I will believe in God. <laughs> Even if I show God to them, they do not believe God. Our God governs the everything of the universe. How, can, how could it be visible? they should believe God by seeing the miracles and signs and wonders manifested because His divinity is contained in the whole world that is created by God. So people can believe God by seeing the world. If they are good in heart, they can believe God. If you look at the shape of the animals, if you look at the world, you can see there is only one Creator, God. But they say, you can, if you can show me God, then I will believe. It's a nonsense. They do not believe even if, I, even if we show God to them. This church has showed so many signs and wonders that can prove our Father God surely exists. Nobody can deny this fact. It doesn't rain in Israel in September. But in the beginning of September, I prayed, and it rained the next day. They should believe it by seeing such fact. Now, this is the uh, article which was uh, issued by InVictory. A Korean pastor prayed for rain in Israel. Jerusalem Post, which is the biggest English newspaper in Israel, said Dr. Gerald Lee prayed for the rain in Israel. This article drew great attention of the people. When Dr. Lee prayed for rain, many people laughed at him because it was not the season of rain in Israel, and there was no weather forecast of rain. But the very next day, the laugh turned into 
amazement because it actually rained. But there were people who couldn't believe. They said it was just a coincidence. Next time, Dr. Gerald Lee prayed for rain in Israel once again, and thanks to the prayer, there were even greater rain. Now, they say there is no such coincidence. They are amazed at the miracle that took place before their eyes. Dr. Gerald Lee teaches people to love God and live a righteous life. And he says, Father God gives answers to such people. So here is the uh, article with my picture on it. And there is another interesting thing. In September 6th and 7th, I prayed for swine flu, right? Now, do you, do you know what the result is? You believe it has been answered, right? The Department of Health in Israel said four thousand one hundred ninety-two. 4,192 got swine flu. I prayed on September 6th and 7th, but according to the report of the Department of Health, 95% of them got recovered. So the number of the swine flu infections decreases. They made this report on October 19th. Before the Israel festival, for 37 days, 21 died of swine flu. But from the day of festival till October 19th, for 48 days, there were just 11 victims. Four thousand one hundred ninety two swine flu victims were uh, reco uh, were found, and ninety percent of them got recovered from swine flu. Israel uh, imported Tommy flu from Switzerland and they have planned to import more. But those swine flu victims got recovered by 95%, sorry, 99%. So there are only 11 who are not you know, well recovered. But after receiving my prayer, the number has been decreased. Therefore, understanding the spiritual realm becomes power to you. So you should know the spiritual realm. The more you clearly the more clearly you know, the more power you will have, and you can receive answer quickly. Do you know when dragonflies disappear? Do you know when? September 28th. On 27th, there was a interesting thing happened.
On September 27th, in the Gethsemane place, thousands of dragonflies appeared. So I talked to the people in the Gethsemane place. Why are there so many dragonflies? I have to talk about it to the, uh, to the congregation. I think there are thousands. But if I you know, told them you know, there were thousands of dragonflies, they would not believe me. So we started to count them. So many dragon, dragonflies sat on everywhere and flying around. Thousands of dragonflies flew and sat on branches of trees. So I told them, why is it that you know they are s there are so many? They stayed until the uh, sunset. I didn't know why. The next day on Monday, they all disappeared. They said, ah, they came to me to greet me. They, they came to me to say goodbye. So we had that kind of conversation. So it was September 27th. From the September 28th, dragonflies disappeared. And then mosquitoes came out. These mosqui mosquitoes are slow and weak because it's cold. So dragonflies finished their duty and disappeared. So I am so thankful to God because Father God showed it to me to, uh, let, me under to let me understand when these dragonflies disappeared. He showed it to me. So a week before June, they appeared and they disappeared on September 28th. Sometimes you can see dragonflies just one or a few, one or two. To the extent you understand the spiritual beings of the spiritual realm, the angels, you can understand the Bible well and your believing life can be strengthened. May you make bread from this Genesis lecture to become all the more powerful children of God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. And next week, I'm going to explain more about angels and, and archangels too. And I'm going to talk about the Gabriel and Michael and other you know, uh, uh, direct uh, archangels who are under direct supervision of God. Let's think over the message and pray together. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you for your love and grace. Let your message become faith and life in our hearts. Father, let us truly understand the spiritual realm and let us apply this knowledge to the world. If we apply it clearly, then it can be very helpful. Father, thank you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. I will pray for the sick. Please lay your hand on the sick part of your body or infirmities of your body and receive this prayer for the desires of your heart. Hallelujah, God the Father, please lay your hand on these people. 
transcending space and time, please work on them. For those who attend and receive this prayer through satellites and internet, and branch church members, and all GCN TV viewers and Manmin TV viewers, many people send prayer requests along with their pictures. Please lay your hand on them. Pastor Shim James requested prayer for the handkerchief prayer meeting, which will be held in October 25th in New York International Mammon Church. Father, please give him courage and be glorified through this meeting. E. Sung Han requested prayer. Father, please bless him so that his dental clinic become prosperous. Let him be recognized well. Mary Boro from the States requested prayer for the spine and arthritis. All the, uh, the herniated disc and arthritis go away, be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Buru Iru, pastor, request prayer for the after effect of the uh, heart operation and for the kidney disease. Please work on this man and burn all diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Kyung Tae Chung, request prayer for the handkerchief prayer meeting in Tabata Mamin Church. Florida Tonta from Mauritius, request prayer for the uh, breast cancer. Be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit. May the light come. All the swine flu go away. From head to toe in every intestines and organs and nervous system. Burn all diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit so that they can become healthy in spirit and body. Swine flu go away. Variations go away. Be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit. All the flu, cold, fever go away. All the contagious diseases go away. All go away. Burn all diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Be cleansed. Father, please work on their family and their children. All the swine flu go away. All the variations go away. Be burnt by the fire of the Holy Spirit. May the light come. Father, thank you. Let all diseases go away. Let them see well. Let them hear well. All kinds of diseases in their organs go away, be burned by the fire of the Holy Spirit. May the light come. Father, let all become healed and cleansed. All the skin diseases go away. May the light come. All the skin diseases go away. May the light come. Father, please let them become healthy in spirit and in body and be with us in the second half of this service. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.